Welcome to episode 6, subtitled Embracing the Chaos. That will become clear shortly. Fair warning, it's probably going to be a long one. I am expecting to exceed my self-imposed 30 minutes. So go spend a penny, make a pot of tea, get a packed lunch. We could be here a while. I've got a lot I want to share with you. Finished objects, a whip, new cast-ons, I've been shopping and of course there is the giveaway. Because I said last week if we could make it to 50 subscribers I would do a giveaway and well last time I checked we were at nearly 70. So yeah, thank you. Right, let's move on finished objects i have finished you will no doubt be thrilled to hear my jumper this is the stillness i was going to put it on but it's very warm it's warm the temperature is warm and also the jumper is very warm because it's 30 percent wool and was just too hot so there'll be pictures on Instagram later and on I've started a Facebook page for the video the vlog podcast I don't know what it's called really if you're on Facebook the page is called I wrote it down so I don't mislead you Mouses Makes Knitting Podcast and it's just a group I'm pretty sure you can just join. Um, if not, apply to join and I'll let you in. But I think I've set it up that you can just join yourself. Because I thought it would be nice if there was a place where we could chat with each other. You could chat with me. We can share photographs of our stuff. Um, because I can't do that on Ravelry. Because I don't know how. It's a bit of an embarrassing revelation. But I'm not the only podcaster um, I know who can't work Ravelry properly. So it's not too bad a thing to have to admit. So, yeah, so there will be photos later on there and on Instagram. If you follow me on Instagram so you can see what it looks like on in like widescreen. No, I, I get told off for doing that. So. For now, I shall put it on a hanger so we can have a look. And here she is. It is the Stillness sweater by Sweet Paprika Designs. And the actual designer is Elizabeth Sullivan. And if I remember to, I'll put a link in the description because it's not on Ravelry. You have to go to their website. It's marked as an intermediate pattern. And I think probably only because it's knit in the round and because I don't know if you can see there is waist shaping. So that maybe makes it a little bit more complicated or so they think. I actually found it. Sorry, it's itching my nose. It's I don't know if you can see it's got quite a halo to it or yarn. And it, it's tickling my nose. I forgot where I was going. Yes, I found it very easy to knit. And if you saw last week's episode, this sweater and I had a major falling out. Made worse by the fact that I discovered that where I had joined on the first sleeve, I hadn't matched up the yarn that I was joining on to the yarn that I'd left on hold. And there was a big drama about I was going to have to pull it down. And believe me, it was a big drama because I wasn't feeling at all well last week. I should not have been making any videos. I should have been laying in bed. But I'm very stubborn and I wanted to do my video. And I thought, in fairness, I thought I might feel worse the next day. And in actual fact, the next day I felt absolutely fine. So I should have just waited. I'm sure you wouldn't have noticed if the video went up on a Thursday instead of a Wednesday. But so 
that's yeah by the by so before i thought i was gonna have to pull it down and ugh, i was very traumatized by that fact because for some reason, and I have no idea why, I decided to knit the sleeves on DPNs. And I hate using DPNs. And since I learnt to use Magic Loop, I've never used them. So what possessed me to decide to do a sleeve? I had no idea. Force of habit, possibly. But anyway, before I pulled it down, I had a look and I realised, I don't know if you can see, if I can get it all in. If I had matched on one side, it wasn't the same to match on the other side. And I very quickly realised that that would mean that the sleeves didn't match. So I considered that long and hard, like for about a nanosecond. And decided that having sleeves that didn't match would upset me more than having the line where they join on a bit more obvious. Mainly because that meant I didn't have to pull down my sleeve. So having had this fantastic revelation, I took the sleeve off the DPNs, magic looped it and finished it in about an hour. And then did the other one. And sure enough, let me see if I can work this out to show you how to be. The sleeves match. Or do they? Because, I mean, they match in as much as they finish at the same point. But I don't know how it comes out on your monitor. You see that stripe there? One side is green, the other side is quite definitely grey. So that's the first two reasons why this episode is subtitled Embracing the Chaos. Because of the chaos up here and then the chaos down there. And I messaged my friend my friend who came to see me the other Wednesday. And she said, what are you going to do about those sleeves? Have you pulled them down yet? And I said, no. I have decided to embrace the chaos. And she laughed uproariously and said, yeah, let's see how long that lasts. Because she knows me too well. I am such a control freak. But I'm quite pleased with myself. And actually, all joking aside, I'm really quite pleased with the jumper. Because... The stripes are even. They're even on the body, obviously, because you knit it in the round. They're even on the sleeves to each other. So I think I can live with just the fact. And the fact that it does the same on both sides, although it's not quite the same colour, because on this side it's green and burgundy, and on this side it's green and it almost looks like brown, where the, the yarn is changing. It looks like it's okay. It looks like it's meant to do that. So I can live with that. So we're happy with that. And well, that's that there, maybe. I will certainly knit the pattern again. As you can see, the pattern is originally designed for you to use different yarns to make your stripes. And then they all come out even. Unless you think you're going to be clever and use self-striping yarn. Oh, that was Poppy. Poppy just made a brief entrance. So she can't get on the windowsill and left again. She might be back. Yeah, if you try and be clever, it doesn't work. But I think it's worked out okay. So I'll certainly knit it again, possibly in the stripes as it's meant to be. But I can also see that it would look quite nice in kind of a heathery... I mean heathery you know when you've got a yarn where you've got little flecks of different colours in that's heathery isn't it I don't know sometimes words escape me they just fall out my brain and it'll come back to me about four o'clock in the morning but yeah recommended even though it says it's an intermediate pattern I don't think it would give a new knitter much trouble at all 
so that's good. My second finished object or objects is a pair of sock one or two. I don't know. My husband's socks. Looking a bit odd because I haven't got any sock blockers that are man size, though I hope to rectify that, but probably not this month. I'll tell you why later. I've been very bad. Don't look at me. Very bad. Yeah. So just plain vanilla socks with Rico Superba, Jacquard, Melange, I think the the main wool was and then I know it's called truly wool in kind of a denim blue is the contrast cuffs heels and toes knitted on 2.25 mil needles which is what I tend to use for socks all the time fixed point addies they are my favorite and he knows they're finished, but bless him, he hasn't even seen them yet because I wanted to show you first. So he was putting his socks on on Monday and he was putting on a pair of socks I'd made for him. And I said, your new pair are finished, but you can't have them yet because I want to show everyone else first. Here's your socks, Dave. I know he watches. Let everyone know if they're comfy and they fit. You probably will. That's all for finished objects. But between them, they bring my total up for this year, bearing in mind it is the 12th of May. Three adult sweaters, four shawls, well, four and two thirds, because I got two thirds of the way through one that I was doing as a colour block and didn't like it and pulled it down, and nine pairs of socks. Yeah, that's pretty good as a running total. I'm doing all right. But having finished those has meant I have, oh no, whip, whip first, whip. This is, sorry, this is, let me find a sock blocker. I'm trying to remember what it is. Ryan Beck is calling, got there in the end. This is Ryan Becky's Calling by Crazy Sock Lady, Kay Litton. I'm being a brave and adventurous girl by knitting it cuff down. This is again on 2.25 needles, but these are Knit Pro. Hang on, I've got the packet. These were a present from my husband. Knit Pro Nova, and they're they're good. Um, they're a little bit pointier than the Addies, which I think is good, though um, they're not so pointy that they make your finger sore. The only issue I have with them, and I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Hang on, cover me up. Can you see where the coating's worn off? What do they do? They do this, don't they? There you go. And that happened before I'd even finished one sock. So I don't know if that's... It's only happened on one tip, so I don't know if that's a fault with that particular needle or with the brand. But it doesn't really matter, to be honest. They, you know, work perfectly well. So that's those. This is still the first sock. Um... And you may be able to see, you probably can't actually, but let me try. Another reason we're embracing the chaos, can you see that just here, hang on, where's my finger? Where's my finger gone? There it is. Just here, rather than the sort of mustache thing going on, I've got a little bit of rib. Because apparently I lost track. This is what happens when you knit. When you wake up in the middle of the night and you can't go back to sleep and you do knitting, this is what happens. Don't do anything the least bit complicated if that's what you're going to do. You will come unstuck, as I have proven. And the yarn that I'm using for those 
is some of my hand dyed advent year long advent from Ange Knits. It doesn't have a colourway name, but it is very pretty. Very pretty. Bit bit girlier colours than I would normally um, make myself something in, but I do love it. So that doesn't matter, does it? Put that away. So that's it for whips. And having finished some things has meant that I can cast some new things on. Which I am very gleeful about. I've cast on a new jumper. I haven't got very far with it. I only cast it on Monday. Yeah, Monday, the day before yesterday. So I've got the back. It's knit in the round and it, it does the short rows for the back. And a little bit for the front. And this is off my not very short short list. It's the Breezeway by Fogbound Knits. And I read through the pattern before I started because I like to do that. So I've got an idea of where I'm going. And I thought, my God, this is really complicated. And then I realised that when I'd stapled my printing together, I'd mixed two of the pages up. So it was actually telling me to cast off before I'd started the shaping for the raglan. So when I sorted that out, it wasn't at all complicated. Imagine. What a fool. And again, this is my Ange Knits Advent yarn. I think this was January's pack colour greys. And I'm doing it in this and then kind of grey into a tealy turquoise and then uh, a darker turquoise with less grey for the third yarn. Ty the dog next door has seen me again and is barking at me. He's getting better, but my husband freaked him out last night by bringing the motorbike into the garden because he, he went to get on his bike to come home from work and discovered he'd got a flat tyre, which necessitated getting the AA out and then riding home very gently on a plugged tyre and bringing it round into the back so he could take the wheel off so he could take it today to get new tyre put on. And Ty, I don't think, had seen a motorbike before. Wasn't overly impressed. Never mind. He's a good boy, though. Once he saw it was Dave on it, and he loves Dave, he was OK. Another new cast on. Now, I know I said, I said last week, if I say I'm going to cast on another top-down sock somebody slapped me well I take it back because I realised that what my problem with top-down socks was that I didn't know how to do a stretchy enough cast on when I started making socks and of course now I do though I still can't do that twisted German cast on I watched another video by um one of the bearded pearl guys, Justin, I think it was. I love Justin. He's my knitting husband. And I still can't do it. It just requires more brain wiggling than I'm capable of. But I used the one that I found for the the socks, the, the Rhinebeck is calling socks, and it's come out okay, look. I haven't got that weird loopiness this time. That's all right. So I'm knitting again the crazy sock lady heel toe do si do socks. But this time I'm knitting them properly from the cuff down. The pair I made before I knit toe up, which is how I normally knit socks. And I just borrowed the chevron pattern from the front. So I'm doing it all properly this time in some really pretty yarn. See, these are more the colours that I normally pick for myself. And it is Sirdar Heart and Soul. 
and it's the usual 75% wool, 25% nylon. Um, and it's just shade 55. And for, I've, I've gone proper crazy sock lady. If you watch her, you know she very often does just two rows of a contrasting colour at the top. And I've, I've copied that because I thought if you're going to do it, you might as well do it properly. And this is Drops Fable colour 105 and I'm going to use that for the heel and toe as well. I haven't got very far with that. You can just begin to see, whoops, just begin to see the chevron pattern emerging, I think. Just. So, I take back what I said about cuff down socks. I was just being silly. For a very brief while, before I fell ill, I was a driving instructor. And I used to say to my pupils, it's not hard, it's just new. The more you practice it, the easier it will get. And I really ought to listen to myself, didn't I? Because it's true. It's not hard at all, it's just new. And I was just being an old fuddy-duddy and going, well, that's not the way I do it, so I don't like it. So I've had a word with myself and I'm now embracing, embracing the chaos, but I'm also embracing the cuff-down socks. And I have a third new cast on. I'm probably rustling a lot, I'm very sorry. And it is, again, from my... Those socks weren't. This is from my Not Very Short Short List. And it is the One and Done Shawl by Casapinka. Having started knitting it, I'm a little bit frightened to finish because, as I say, I like to read the pattern through. And I note that when finished, the longest edge is 86 inches. And I'm not sure I've got enough blocking mats to deal with that. But at the same time, that's going to be a lovely big shawl. And I'm knitting it in... Whoops! I'm sorry, I've got dropsy today. I'm knitting it in, if it'll come out the bag, Peony by Ducky Darlings. How gorgeous is that? That has pretty much all my favourite colours in. All it's missing really is shocking pink and the equivalent tearly turquoise colour, though there is a little bit of that in there. So yeah, that's how far I've got with that. And because it's my ducky darling's yarn, it had to have a little ducky. Had to, didn't it, really? And I think that's going to be... I mean, look at those colours. I don't want to be vain, but look at those colours against my creamy skin. <sighs> I'm going to tell you, actually, this is completely, completely off track. My best friend... I don't want to say her name because I don't know if, if she'd be happy for me to do that, but I call her my sister. And partly it's because we know each other very well. But partly it's because we went, we used to work together and we went on a, I think it was somebody's leaving do it. might even have been mine actually now I think about it. And one of the ladies we worked with, we were chatting away like you do. And she said, your accent isn't as strong as your sister's. And we both went. And then we realised that she thought that my friend and I were sisters. And I can kind of see why, because we, as I say, we know each other very well. We think the same. We um, are a similar build. We are both curvaceous ladies, though she is considerably less curvaceous than I am. Uh, we have similar face shapes. We have similar hairstyles now, though we didn't then. But her hair is dark. Mine is not. Um, she's quite almost olive skinned. Um, 
But the kicker is, she has a thick Scottish accent. So we were a little bit puzzled. But anyway, it, it started off as a joke, but we do refer to each other as sisters. And it's become very handy because um, I had to go for a hospital appointment where I had to have something rather personal looked at. And I was a bit anxious, so she came with me um, and was able to say without any kind of, you know, giveaway look in my eye, is it OK if my sister comes in? So it does have its benefits. But, I mean, she's, she swears blind she's five foot. But I think that's an exaggeration. I think, because I'm five foot three and she's quite a bit shorter than me. I think if she's five foot, it's only because she's like breathed in and stretched. I know she's watching this. She's probably swearing at me now. Anyway, so that has my new cast-ons. Then I did some shopping. And there's quite a bit of it. I don't really know where to start. I think I'm going to start with the fabric shopping. I went on Monday, went into Taunton. My son had an appointment, an interview, um, with the Army Careers Office, actually. And my husband said, are you going to come? And I was all a bit, oh, no, I won't come. Because I've been, it's the same for a lot of us, I know. But I've been indoors for so long that I don't really see any need to go out now. And then when I do want to go out, I won't say I'm anxious about it, but... It's not as easy as it used to be, is it? You can't just hop in your car and go somewhere. You've got to make sure you've got a mask and probably some sanitizer. And how many people are going to be in the shop? And have you got to stand and wait? And at the moment, much to my mortification, I have to use one of those little wheelie push along trolley type things because my balance is, well, it's non-existent. I turn my head and fall over. So I need that to kind of steady me, which is a bit of a bonus because I've got one that's got a seat on it. So if I have got to cut queue to go into a shop, I can sit on the seat. But I hate using it. And I will avoid using it if possible. My husband will say, do you want your walker? And I go, oh, no, I'll be fine. And then I'm not fine. And then I'm in trouble. So, yeah, it's just not as easy as it used to be, is it? So I try and put it off. But he said, well, we'll park in this particular car park and we'll go to the fabric shop. <sighs> After nearly 30 years, that man knows which buttons to push, I'm telling you. So we went to the fabric shop and I bought some fabric because I may have mentioned this before. I don't have any knitting bags at all. Might be more. I'm trying to top them up in my head. It's 10 or 11, I think. I've got another one cut up ready to sew. Sheep wool. Uh, sheep fabric. Two lots of cat fabric. And now this. I'm just going... I'm, I'm depressing myself now with, with how much fabric... I've just realised I've not only got a yarn mounting, I've got a fabric mounting as well. And I'm just... <sighs> there probably needs to be an intervention. Anyway, I found this really nice foxy fabric. And I do like a fox. And I found even more sheep fabric. And sheep fabric is just a thing, isn't it? If you're a knitter, it is a thing. And then I got to the till and I'd bought a ton of ribbons. And the lady said, 
she totted it all up and she went that's 42 pounds and i said oh is that all and she said yes we, d we don't let you back out the shop until you've spent 50. um and then i espied behind her some more fabric and it was scully fabric and i do like scully stuff and she got it down to show me and as she got it down i saw something else and i ended up buying this because i love a bat as well you may have noticed i think it's on one pair of my socks i have bat stitch markers because i love them love bats and i ended up buying this instead of the scully fabric because when i looked at it it was skull and crossbones and that's pirates and that's not the i don't like those sort of skulls i like these sort of skulls kind of candy skulls and well just scully skulls no crossbones and i also bought i only bought a couple of fat quarters of each of these though i don't know how well you can see it i don't really want to um volkswagen campers that's on the floor now chickens i don't even particularly like chickens i don't know why i had to have that but i did have to have it so there'll be more bags on the way and i bought some stitch markers i've got to stay off into instagram this is where all the damage is occurring. Nobody needs as many stitch markers as I have now in my possession. But the bunnies were so cute. And that one in the middle reminds me of our cat Poppy. And then the pussy cats, well, they were pussy cats. And then the leaves with pretty colours. she sent me a tea bag to drown my sorrows probably because i bought well she had no idea about all the rest of this stuff and then there's another lady that i've bought from a couple of times and i like sorry i'm rustling again i like buying from her because she's in croydon and i'm from croydon and we cronks girls have to stick together but yeah oh sorry they were from joy to the wool and this she's called the stitchy lobster and i got some bees and she puts in it's the second time i've ordered from her and she puts in a gummy bear stitch marker as well i don't know if you can see that because i can't see what i'm doing they're all gummy bear and that's just reminded me that there's another knitting bag that i want to make myself with a bee on it you can't see but i've got black leggings on and i'm now absolutely covered in cat hair and bits of you know like threads of fabric so that was kind of my non although i suppose stitch markers do count as knitting that was kind of my non and they're to make knitting bags what the hell it's all knitting stuff isn't it it is deramores the evil geniuses sent me a 15 percent off code because i hadn't ordered from them for a while it's wicked because i like a sucker thought oh yes i shall order some stuff from from deramores so I ordered, of course I did, two balls of sock yarn. Because so I like to have some contrast in colours. And I've got an, a real thing about this lime green colour at the moment. I love anything that's lime green. Don't know what that's about. So that brings my 
sock yarn total up to 48 not including my hand dyed but I also bought some yarn Stylecraft Batik DK to make this jumper which is C Silosius possibly I think so Silosius Colosius don't know by Jen Steingrass and I started to knit that earlier in the year and I will show you I chose this lovely limey green and white and you can see why I gave up knitting it because there's just not enough contrast am I really wobbling that about because I can't see what I'm doing let me try again try and hold it still and after I'd done this I saw a tip where someone said try your yarns together and take a black and white photograph and see how they contrast and that really works but I didn't see that till afterwards so it was too late so I abandoned this but I thought that yarn would be really nice and I don't know whether to do it as it is in the pattern with the colour work in white or whether to just do it in that kind of mild yarn. Don't know. But I've got plenty of time because that has now gone on the bottom of my not very short short list. So the, the list hasn't got any shorter because I've taken off a pair of socks and a jumper and put back on a pair of socks and a jumper which is kind of defeating the object of trying to work my way through the list but at least there is I suppose some kind of order going on but anyway I made a bit of a mistake with this here yarn because I ordered five balls which is what I normally order for a, a sweater but I didn't look closely enough to see that they are 50 gram balls so the five balls arrived and then I had to order another five of which weren't with a 15% discount and then literally the day they arrived Darren Moore sent me another discount code so I'm not very happy about that but it's my own fault and I'd like to tell you that's all the shopping I did but I would be lying do you remember you may not have seen the episode, you may be new. Back two, three episodes ago, I showed you I'd bought the Spring Collection by Ange Nitz. And I said, this Rose Gardens is my favourite. I'm almost certainly going to order some more of that. How well I know myself. Maybe my finger slipped. But that is absolutely it. I must not buy any more yarn. I've got enough now to make two more sweaters that's what I intend to do sorry I should have taken this out of the bag it's very rustly this is just so pretty and then this again is my favourite colours it's the yellowy gold green it's gorgeous and I might as well own up now to the fact that I have another two skeins of yarn coming from somebody else And I'm going to try, I think I'm safe to say that I'm going to try not to buy any more yarn for the rest of the month. Because it's already the 12th. But I'm going to try not to buy any more yarn for the rest of this month or next month. But Ducky Darlings keeps posting pretty things 
Well, lots of people do. Ducky Darlings, My Yarny Corner, my friend Alex is um, dyeing up some yarn. She's going to open an Etsy shop with it. And Little Lycac Yarns has got some lovely things. I'm doomed. One of these days you'll hear this loud rumbling noise and it will be the sound of the floor in my my craft room giving up the ghost under the weight of yarn and fabric that I've collected. I'll probably hear it in Los Angeles and think it's another earthquake. Anyway. Now I'm mildly embarrassed. I'm going to move on to something nicer. So let's talk about the giveaway. I'm a little bit mildly embarrassed about this as well because I thought I'd like to do something for you personally. Rather than buy stuff to give you, I wanted to make you something. So I have made two knitting bags, project bags. She could use them for crochet, it's not against the law. There is a little one, which is oh, more stuff on the floor, honestly. This is my favourite size of bag. It's sock size, it will take easily take one or two hundred gram balls and it's ideal for socks, baby clothes, hats, mittens, small projects. And I've even looked, because my new sewing machine, I, I treated myself earlier this year to a new sewing machine. So I was using my mum's old one and it's donkey's years old. And look, it does embroidery. I can't tell you how, I just want to embroider everything. So I've embroidered it across with like little, a bit like owly footprints. And I didn't think about it while I was doing it, but when I looked at it afterwards, I thought, let's pretend they've walked in red paint. Or if it suits you, depending on what kind of a day you're having, they've walked across in the blood of your enemies. Maybe having that kind of a day. It's lined with blue fabric. There's no pockets or anything, um, which is selfish because I don't like pockets. I prefer to have a, a little notions bag or something. So I didn't put pockets in. So that's the first one. The second one is larger, and this one is big enough for a jumper or a shawl. Um, small blanket, maybe. And... This one has got a spotty red ribbon and again I played with my embroidery. So both drawstring obviously. Um, this one's got a white lining and again no pockets. And the reason my, hus my husband, my son chose the fabric, we have a, like a family joke that comes from a programme that you've probably never heard of called Phone Shop. And it was a comedy programme on Channel 4. And the reason we loved it so much is it was filmed on Sutton High Street, um, which is where my husband used to live and where I worked for a while. And so it, there was a huge amount of nostalgia value because they sounded like the people we grew up with. And one of the, the main characters is just, it's my brother, I swear. Um, and then we, we'd sort of be paying attention to the background and look, oh, there's the shop where we bought my engagement ring and there's where we used to have coffee. And there's a particular scene which is filmed in a coffee place up at the top of the high street called Poppins, or it was back then where my mother-in-law used to take my eldest on a Saturday for like a treat when she went into the shops. She used to take him for a cowboy, which was like burger and chips. And the two characters are discussing 
one of them's got a, a new girlfriend and they're discussing i won't go into the ins and outs of it because it is adult comedy they're discussing this tattoo she's got and one of them goes it's mr wise it's called and he goes you know who's mr wise and he says oh it's this owl on her shoulder and he goes a owl and the other one says a owl a owl and this goes on for ages and that it's kind of become an in-family joke so every time we see an owl we've now got owls in the living room every time we see an owl the first person to see it has to go a owl and i even for quite some time contemplated buying an owl shaped backpack because wherever we go on the bikes, my husband makes me lead because you always put the smallest bike at the front because, you know, that's going to be the slowest. So it keeps pay everybody keeps pace with the, the smallest bike or the least experienced rider, whatever. You put them at the front. And I thought every time we pull up at traffic lights or a roundabout or anywhere, he's going to ride up next to me and go, ah, ow. And to begin with, I thought that might be quite funny. But then I realised it would very soon get old. So I didn't get the backpack in the end. Anyway, long winded story. If you want to see what I'm on about and if you're not offended by language. I think it's series one, episode two, phone shop. It is on YouTube. It's very funny. So these are your giveaway options. And I was going to give away one, but we've well exceeded the 50 subscribers. And I know that's a tiny amount in the scheme of things. There are other new podcasters out there who've got less episodes than me and like 2,000 followers. But that's not really what it's about for me. Um, so I want to give you both. So what you need to do is just in the comments... Put small or large, just to let me know that if your name is picked out of the hat, which bag you would prefer to have. And then I'm going to keep that open until midnight next Tuesday, which is Tuesday the 18th of May. Midnight is the cutoff. So just comment small or large. And I will, next week's podcast, I will draw a name out of a hat for each pardon me and then what i'm going to do is i'll pack them up today so that by the time you receive them they'll have been out of human contact for probably a couple of weeks um so you can be certain that they're all covid safe and everything so there we go so i hope you like them i hope you're not disappointed that it's not you know fancy stuff um i think that's everything i'm doing oh not done too badly 50 minutes gone over well nearly double but not not as bad as i feared um i can't do the chapters thing but what i will do is try and put a note in the description of what section is where so you can why am i telling you this now it's too late if you've got this far through you've already watched the whole damn thing haven't you so there's no point telling you i'm going to put chapters so that you can skip through <sighs> too late too late for that you're probably long gone by now anyway <sighs> well, i'll try and do it anyway because people might notice before they start watching I don't know. So I think that's everything. Check out the Facebook page if you're on Facebook. You're welcome to join. As I say, what I'd like it to be is kind of a community thing so that we can, you can show me your stuff as well as me showing you mine. And, you know, we can chat to each other and you can ask me questions if you want to know anything. And it'd just be nice because I try and chat with people in the comments, but that's, it's harder, I don't know. It'd be easier if we could do it on Facebook. If you are not a Facebook user um, and would prefer it to be on Ravelry, 
I will try and find out how I can do that. But I've literally been on Ravelry for, I think, two or three years and only just figured out how I can comment on someone else's thread. So, yeah, not great with the Ravelry. Um, WhatsApp is another option. We could start a WhatsApp group if that's what you would prefer. But for the moment, Facebook seems like the easiest and the most accessible. Um, so, yeah, so it's Mouses Makes Knitting Podcast. And just come along and join us. Um, I think that's all. You can also find me on Instagram if you wanted to chat through Instagram. It's amandajane.davies.58. Um, yeah, they're the two uh, social media access things that I use the most. So that's it for today. And uh, I will see you next week. Well, we'll draw for the giveaway if anybody's actually entered it. That's my big fear. My big fear is that everybody's going to go look and go, hmm, don't really want that. So this may be the last you ever see of me. In which case, thank you for joining me. Um, and I may possibly see you again next week. Bye.